What is going on everybody? I hope everyone is doing well. All right, in this video, we are gonna do part two of budget-friendly off-grid power solutions. Uh, so, there's gonna be two unboxings in this video. It's only for the fact that one, it's a lithium battery and I really didn't, uh, there's really not much to it. It's just the battery and instructions. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that in as well as there was a, uh, the Renogy DC to DC charge. What this video is mainly about is installing it. So I won that on an online auction. I didn't buy it from Amazon or from the actual place. So it was heavily discounted because it was at an online auction for whatever it reason. It works because we tried it out. I don't want to focus on these unboxings because it's truly not a real unboxing, especially for the Renogy. I just want to focus on installing the Renogy into the Yukon. So All right, so this is the battery right here that I ended up getting for $460 Canadian. Uh, it is a 12 volt, 100, 120 amp hour battery. Uh, with the Dometic fridge that we have, this should be supplying us roughly around, uh, I want to say maybe 40 hours of continuous use with the fridge. So basically what comes in the package is the battery, the charger, which is right there, uh, and then a manual for the battery right here. So the posts are actually not up, so they're bolt on, which I guess in my case, this actually will work out very well. A handle here to carry it around because we are gonna be using this not only into the truck, but also as the boat as well. Uh, I'm planning to do some excursions with the boat and it'll be nice to take the Dometic fridge with us and also a fully charged lithium boat, uh, battery. So that way we can have a fridge on the boat, on our 16 foot boat. All right, so that is it for the unboxing, <laughs> rapid unboxing of the, of the battery. Okay. So in order to charge the lithium battery, you're gonna need, you cannot hook it directly to your alternator. Um, what this will end up doing will end up frying and causing serious damage to your lithium battery. Lithium batteries are very sensitive and you need a special charger basically to charge the battery. In this case, I ended up winning this at an online auction. So it's one of those places where they take, I guess, Amazon returns or eBay returns uh, and then, then after those pallets and then after they uh, go ahead, put it on in the auction, uh, auction off individually. So this is one of the items that did go for auction and I ended up spending maybe about $75 on, on this thing. Um, can, again, Canadian dollars. Uh, they roughly go for, I'm not sure, I think it's like 150 or $175. Uh, I'll put it, I'll put the price down here that I, that, where I find it on Amazon. Um, so, all right, so when we open up the box, it's just literally this right here. It's the unit itself. It's about the same size as a small, I want to say maybe 400 watt inverter or maybe a 200 watt inverter. So you have one side, which is the input going from the, uh, from the battery or alternator. So the, the truck system. So the alternator goes into here and then the output is coming out of here. So this would go to the lithium battery. These dials that are right here will be for, uh, depending on what type of battery, because this does, this also charges uh, gel, uh, lead acid, and different types of batteries. Uh, so depending on what battery, I'm gonna have to go online. I'm for, uh, it did not come with a manual. So I'm gonna go online, figure out the, the sequence of one to five switches that it needs to be for the lithium battery. Uh, this one here is an optional uh, input. And then this one here would be if you want to connect this to your ignition. So that way, when you turn your ignition off, the system turns off. So that way it doesn't draw battery. And I am going to be doing this because I do not want this to be drawing power from the auxiliary or from the second battery in our truck. Because essentially what it will do is when the truck is off, it will drain the auxiliary battery. I am, like I said, I'm going to be connecting this to our, the ignition on the truck. So this will only be charging the lithium battery when the truck is running. All right, so the area that I'm gonna be installing the lithium battery is right in here. As you saw from the other videos, this is where I have that battery booster pack. Uh, I made that little area inside here. Well, that's where this lithium battery is gonna go. What I will be doing is I'm gonna be cutting out an access panel here so that way I can just lift it straight up and down. It'll just be easier to grab. 
So first things first that we need to do is actually pull this out so that we can pull this panel out because I'm going to be installing the DC to DC charger right beside the inverter inside here. All right, so what is happening here is that once this panel is back up there, there's actually not enough room for the DC to DC charger to be in this area because of the wheel well, that stud right, right there, and also there's a couple of other studs. So the idea that I'm thinking of and how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make a bracket coming straight up on an angle. Same thing on here, on an angle. Use these to bolt onto the to the bracket and then bolt a piece of plywood on top of there as well and then i can bolt this on top of the plywood and that'll be enough room for it to fit more or less in this area right here Alright, it's the next day and we continued working and uh, so we finished up the brackets we painted them uh, which are right here super simple very very simple design nothing too extravagant so I am going to now attempt putting the bracket on to try to see on how everything's gonna be and if it works out then I'm gonna go ahead paint the plywood uh, which will be here and we can slowly make some progress today. I don't see it. All right, so there it is Once this is dried Then I am going to bolt it on right here, Then I'll figure out a way on how to bolt that To the plywood All right, so this is how it looks All right, so now that this is all mounted, uh, the idea to do right now is actually to do the wiring. So I am going to run some wire from there to here. Uh, one side is in, one side is out. The main wire for the battery from the front of the truck goes into here. Then this one comes out for the switch. So the DC to DC charger will be connected to this terminal here, and then the inverter will be connected to this one here. All right, so so as we're getting in there, or as we're about to start, uh, there's a couple of things that I need to have ready. Uh, like I said, I wanna be able to disconnect the system or the uh, lithium battery from the truck so that way I can take it into the boat. Uh, with that is gonna be an Anderson plug. So these are just uh, high amperage plugs that can be used to disconnect uh, so that way I can pull the battery out. Um, I only have two, I need to get another pack so that way I can have it in the boat so that way I can plug the Dometic fridge into the battery. So we have that. We have four lugs, and these ones are four gauge uh, three eighths. It's a little big, but it'll still do. The wire that I'm gonna be using for this is gonna be a four gauge wire. <laughs> now, if you guys hear any of that buzzing noise, uh, I do apologize. It's actually the charger for the lithium battery. 
Uh, the block unit has a little fan in there and it's buzzing pretty loud. We're gonna be making this harness now and we're definitely gonna be using the Anderson plug. What I'm gonna do is after this is done, I'm gonna take all the zip ties off and I have a sleeve to go over uh, just to give it extra protection. So I just figured this out. Um, <laughs> it was from that side. So as you guys were seeing, I was uh, unscrewing the screw over here and after using needle nose pliers to pull out the screw because of this uh, shield. Uh, what I didn't realize at the time, <laughs> and not until afterwards, until I saw like these little ridges, rigid sides over here. Take your finger, one finger on each side, squeeze that area, <laughs> it actually comes off. So no need for needle nose pliers. Huh. Now that we have the DC to DC charger mounted onto the panel, the next thing to do is actually to test for fitment. Uh, so we're going to put the panel on, flip it over, and check to see if there's going to be any interference with the side of the truck here. Now that I have this panel here dry fitted, uh, I can actually see what the DC to DC charger is actually hitting. It's the cover for the fuel neck there. Uh, so now I'm just debating on what can I do, how much I can move the DC to DC charger around. Uh, so we're gonna be just moving it a little bit forward and up at the same time onto the plywood. Uh, that should be giving us enough clearance to be able to put that panel on. Yep, just like I thought. Fits nicely and was just enough room. Um, so I'm just pushing it a little bit tighter up against the wall, making sure that it has enough clearance and it does. So I'm just amazed on the fact that I'm able to fit not only the DC to DC charger, but also my inverter as well into this one spot. All right, so here is the setup now. It There's a lot going on here, a lot. <laughs> All right, let's start with the Renergy 40 amp DC to DC charger uh, that is mounted on a bracket that I made, which is hovering just over the inverter. So the battery monitor thing that I have though, which is pretty cheap, but works pretty decent. Uh, instead of running it off on monitoring the voltage for the secondary battery in the truck, uh, I wired it up so that way it's going to be monitoring the, the voltage for the lithium battery. Now when I did that, I just connected the positive and what ended up happening was this wasn't working. And I was trying to figure out like what's going on, why isn't it working? Well, it seems like anything that's connected to this on the output side is completely isolated from the rest of the truck. So when I had the negative uh, hooked up here, it wasn't working. So what I had to do was connect it right there to the negative. And then when I tried out the, the medic plug right there, it was the same thing. It wasn't working. So I'm like, okay, you know what? That means that I have to reroute the, the ground from there, put it back onto the Renergy. So now everything is working. Uh, we have the input from the batteries going into the Renergy here. Up on this side, as you can see, the two wires coming in for the lithium battery is right here. Um, we have the trigger wire right there, and then we have a couple of extra wires. Those are the monitoring system, and then the other two wires that's going to go for the plug over there. All right, so that is it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, so the next part of the video is actually gonna be finding a spot for the lithium battery. Here's a sneak peek of what I'm actually up to. It's gonna be in the recovery drawer over here. 
and uh, so that way we can pull it out whenever we need to like again i want to use the lithium battery in our boat as well as uh, alongside with the dometic fridge that way when we go out on the water for whatever we're going to be doing we have a fridge it would be awesome so with that said if you enjoyed the video and you, and you like these kind of videos, whether it's off-roading, boating, or just upgrading and all this kinds of stuff, go ahead. Think about subscribing. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that way you are notified every time that there is a new video. Also all right, I'm going to do a montage of the panel. After that, that's going to be it for the video. So until the next time, stay safe, and who knows, maybe we'll see you out there.